Good afternoon, Line Golf Academy members and guests, and welcome back to another episode. And today we are taking a look at Muni He, also known as Lily He. Born in Chengdu, Sichuan, China, she started playing golf at a very early age and by five years old was already playing competitive golf. You may not have heard much about her game, but mark my words, within three to five years she will be a fixture on the tour and dare I say may take over the LPJ circuit altogether. She has already proven her abilities as an amateur by winning multiple tournaments, playing in the LPJ four times, and also playing in and making the cut at the US Women's Open, all doing this by the age of 16. Today, I will diagnose her swing and also go into some statistics showcasing her amazing ability to be one of the straightest drivers on tour. I will also explain what I feel her telling stats are to work on and why this can relate to your game. So sit back, relax, and let us see how Mooney He's golf swing allows her to be so consistent. Okay, so let's take a look at Lily's swing here. We have the left side her face on and the right side her down the line. Now you will notice a couple of lines here. This bottom line on the right side is her lower plane line. The one above her shoulders is her upper plane line. That long line going through her spine is exactly that. It's a spine angle line. On the left side of the screen here we have that long line. That's her impact line, the right hip brace line, and a little bit of a line right above her head just to see some lateral shift going on there. It was hard to find some swings of her, but I perused the internet and found these two two driver swings, one when she was an amateur, one when she's a professional, but I guarantee you they're pretty similar. And I'm gonna show you why she's able to hit so many fairways in regulation. She is ranked number three on the LPGA Tour, and she hits 87.5% of fairways and regulations, which is pretty high up there. Her driving distance is 253 yards, and you might not say that's a lot, but you know Emily Christine Peterson hits at 239 yards, and since 2012, she's had 38 top tens, two wins in the LPGA Tour, and is a stable name on the tour, so distance is not everything, and it is highly overrated. But obviously for the amateurs, I know we do have a lot of power source leaks, but let's talk about the main power source leak that I see most amateurs have that she does not have at all. And this is that triangle here. So we always want to stay connected as long as we can throughout the swing with our triangle. Now the goal of that is to have a lot of body turn. Most amateurs don't turn enough and they start making up for the lack of turn with their arms and wrist hinge. So let's take a look on the way back. We can initially see that that triangle, if we just go and extend it again, you can see the hands and arms are still connected to that center of the chest. Club is at parallel. All she's basically doing is just turning her body. And we can tell that because she's like against her right brace line. A little bit of lateral shift with her body to get that weight behind it. But she is transferring the weight efficiently and not sliding. And that's another thing I have to focus on with the amateurs is a lot of sliding going back and forth instead of just turning. As we get that club a little bit further back, we can still see a huge shoulder turn and the club is still centered. So right there, she's past 90 degrees. That's where most of the amateurs should aim. Let's get that 90 degree turn, but, but you'll also notice that that club shaft is nowhere near parallel. So when you hear this, get the club shaft to parallel. That's an incorrect thing. Don't do this unless you can get your shoulder turned to about 120, 130 degrees. And what we'll see here is when we keep going back, we'll see she gets a lot of turn. Even there, that's a parallel. Look how much turn she has. She has about 120 degrees. She gets a little bit further back even. So even with that amount of turn, she's probably at 100 and 35, 140 degrees. Look at those hips. Those hips are not even moving in comparison to the shoulders. Even if it's a third, she's still getting 45 degrees of rotation with the hips. Look at all that X factor she has. Now let's go to the right side of the screen here because we're gonna take it to the top as well. And what we'll notice is this is probably one of the best I've ever seen at keeping that club head on plane on the way back. So again, nice full body turn. And what you'll notice is that club head rises right up that lower plane line. And what you'll also notice is the hands never go above or below that lower plane line. And what this will do is it'll create a nice little disappearing act. We can put a little circle around her club head and you will not see her hands. And that is a pure turn. There's very little hand manipulation. The club is rising up that, that plane. And you'll also notice that if I draw her club face angle, it's slightly open to her 
spine angle. So in a perfect world, you'd like that to be pretty close to your spine angle, but you could have also set up slightly open with the face position, could have been playing a fade, who knows, but this is about as good as you can get it. Now let's take it back even further. What we can notice here is look at that club. That club head's gonna stay on that lower plane line, which is really, really effective. And you'll also notice that what we see here again is that triangle. So if we draw the hands to the center of the triangle, they haven't deviated right or left. They're just along for the right of the turn. We're gonna keep on going back. Now the shaft is gonna work its way up to that secondary plane line, but it's still pretty much on plane. It only starts to work to that secondary plane line once we get way back in her turn. You can see she gets right on the money. She is on that secondary plane line to a T. But look at those shoulders, those shoulders wide look at how much shoulder turn she has she keeps going she keeps going right about there she is set and the only reason that club head goes past parallel is because of the immense shoulder turn she's able to produce remember 130 140 degrees it looks like is going to make that club go back further but she is not over hinging so she is good to go back to the left side i've cleaned up all those triangles but let's take a look at their first move she's going to initiate this downswing with that weight distribution and a slight turn so it's a little bit of both she's getting all that weight from the right side that she feels stored up and it's probably not going to be 100 percent it's probably going to be more like 65 maybe 70 percent but she's going to shift that initially to that impact line that's getting that weight over just like a baseball player getting that home run in working from the ground up and as she strikes on through what you'll notice especially from here to here is look at the hand position in relation to the chest so we're going to start to draw that triangle again and this is what we've been talking about is where is that in relation to the chest? So we draw a straight line from the center of the chest. It looks pretty even. We go a couple more frames, straight line, couple more frames I'm going to draw that same straight line and yes it is still in the center of the chest. Impact, two lines and guess what? It's still going to be in the center of the chest. It's so precise that I'm starting to form some stars over here and some origami. That's how ridiculously accurate this move is. At the same time at this impact position, we can draw a line from the ball straight up to her head. So you can see the, the lower body is over that, but the ball's hanging back. And this is what's gonna increase her launch angle to help her with that perfect flight that we're looking for and control that spin. What we can look at at the lower body, if we kind of cut from here down, is we can see a lot of rotation, a lot of driving into that impact line. You can see that right foot pivoting around, which is thrusting the hips towards the target and just past impact. You can see that right foot is almost completely facing the knees, almost gonna face that target. That means all the power was pushed onto the left side while she's still hanging back. And this is what's gonna produce that beautiful launch angle that we're talking about. So let's go to the right side of the screen now and look at what happens from down the line. As we come on through, those hands and arms are gonna work on down, but right about here where things line up, you can see if we draw a straight line, look at how that thing is pointing at the golf ball. That is pretty impressive. So once you get to this midway downswing point, what should happen is the hand should remain going on that path while the club head works its way to the lower path. So that we're gonna look for the hands to stay on this one while the club head works its way down to the lower plane. And that will allow her to keep turning and rotating and keep that club in position to deliver all the power. So as we keep on moving, we can see that club head moving its way down to that lower plane line while the hands are still on the upper plane line and it looks pretty perfect right there. Club face is still slightly open, so there's no deviation at all. As we get down to impact, those hands are still on that yellow plane while club is meeting the lower plane. So this is about as perfect as you can get. There is no shoulder tilt manipulation, so we can see past impact, I'll show you that the shoulders will remain in that tilting position. There's no loss of her posture, which is another fantastic thing that occurs. Let's go past impact slightly, so we can see those hands are still going on that yellow line. So those hands never leave the path is always down that yellow line which is fantastic it's the path that she established midway on the downswing you can see the club is now working its way back to that yellow path but what you can see here is if we draw a little triangle where are her hands and arms they're still in front of her body getting closer to her center they don't get to the center until she gets past right about there they're still in the center of her chest and that's where that release can happen. The arms are always stuck in the center and the hands can just 
release naturally. There's no real flip here. It's just a natural release. So if we keep on going on the left side all the way through, look at this, guess what's happening? We see that same triangle and look at where the hands are in relation to the chest, right in front of it. There's no lateral shift going on. She's still remaining back in her spine angle here. As we come on through, now she gets the upper body to come on over to that impact line. But you take a look, let's take it back a couple frames here. Even when the club is at parallel past impact, take a look at this, guess what we see here? Hands are connected to the center of the chest. It is a fine balance of developing power with what she has, not creating too much power, not jumping out of her posture to create some power, but she is using efficient rotation force. She's keeping her planes in check. She's almost to a T with all of her paths. Coming on through, we see the full follow through now Keep in mind, I want you to look at this over and over again. We see those hands moving back and forth. Now that's just basically momentum of the club head pulling those hands and arms back. But what you'll notice is her body is completely turned. There's no more body rotation, there's nothing. It's just her stabilizing herself. This hand manipulation is what I usually see in amateur swings during impact because they don't turn enough. So she's delaying this manipulation, if we want to call it that, to the very end, till the ball's probably 50, 60 yards down the ferry already. But that is the goal. And how does she do that? By staying very connected, turning, redistributing the weight, and moving efficiently. On the right side, we can see the same thing occur here. The club is pretty much on plane there. We can see this line is gonna match her initial plane line. So we can delete this one and delete this one. And we can see, look, everything's lining up. So very little manipulation here, very little deviation. Coming on through, those hands will now get to that top plane line slightly higher and she rotates through and you can see her finish is pretty close to those plane lines. So there's very little deviation. If anything, it's at the end once she's come out of her posture and, and momentum is pulling that club head every which way. She was playing golf competitively at five years old and started prior to that. So she's been around this game her entire life. Can we get to somebody like this? Probably not, but what can we learn about this is how important body rotation is. So if you are having issues with your paths, with your club face manipulation, I want you to look at your swing, I want you to videotape it and look at how much turn you have or lack of turn that you have. And the quickest way to do this is stretch. Drink water and stretch. If you can stretch, you will change your game. So I hope that helps you take your stats Know your game, know your weaknesses, know your strengths, and I will see you next time. Fairways and Greens.